Uh, welcome. Everyone's going to have to click a button here to uh, say we're good to record. Okay. Great. And we've got to notice the live transcript. So you can enable that if you like, um, but it will be recorded and can be shared and the recording can be shared after as well, um, along with the slides. So that this will, all the materials will be available uh, to, to everyone after this webinar. Um, I want to thank you again for joining us today. I'm excited to talk about um, Anton 2. Some of you may have already uh, run on this system before and have submitted proposals and, and are interested to hear what we have to say about that. Um, others may be coming new. Um, we're, we, we welcome all of you and uh, look forward to answering your questions as we go through. So I'll go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. All right. So, um, so I'm the the PI for the Anton project at PSC. And, uh, and I want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Marcella Madrid, who's with us, who's been with me in this project for, for many years as well, and uh, who uh, created a lot of the materials that I'll be presenting today. Um, she's a co-investigator on our award, which was recently renewed by NIH. So we're, we're grateful uh, to our sponsors for that. Uh, so we, we want to step through here and, and talk about what's in the RFP. Um, a lot of what we'll present here is in the RFP, uh, but I'll try to give a little bit of color and, and a little bit of emphasis um, that, that may help you. And then of course, we can answer questions at the end as, as Kevin mentioned. So we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, Anton II's capabilities and what we want people to, to use it for, um, who can apply uh, for time on Anton II and, and how to maximize your chances of success when you write a proposal and submit it for consideration. So I'm going to minimize the video so I can see all of my slides. There we go. Uh, so um, for those of you who are coming in fresh, uh, Anton 2 is a special purpose supercomputer um, specifically designed. The hardware is architected specifically to solve essentially one problem, that is uh, molecular dynamic simulations of bio biomolecular systems. It was designed and constructed by DE Shaw Research, which we'll refer to as DESRES uh, for the rest of the talk. And um, DESRES has um, Anton II systems at their research facilities, but uh, they have generously over many years made available to uh, the research community um, a Anton system. First, the Anton One system at PSC, and now uh, the Anton II system that we currently have. And this is made available without cost by DESRES, specifically for non-commercial research by um, investigators at US institutions. Um, so uh, we're, as I mentioned, providing this and supporting this system at PSC with support from the National Institutes of Health, uh, specifically the National Institute of General Medical Sciences. Uh, this, this system uh, is um, uh, one of a kind, um, and, and the access through PSC to one of these systems is, is unique. And, uh, and, and what you can do with it is unique in that um, it allows you to, in very short periods of time, uh, approach timescales of MD simulation on the order of milliseconds. So um, we've got links throughout the talk of, that, that link you to all the information that's in the, the uh, about Anton 2, um, and then also about the, this RFP, which we'll be talking more about as we go. So just to emphasize what Anton 2 can do, um, in, in nine machine days. So if you were running on Anton 2 continuously for nine days, then you'd be able to produce research results or MD simulation trajectories that would take at least a year uh, of continuous runtime on any other system that, that we're aware of. Um, now, the, the key here is long trajectories, right? So if you, if you need to simulate a single system for a very long time, uh, then, then that's what Anton 2 enables you to do in a way that you can't do anywhere else. Um, of course, if you are doing ensemble simulations with you know, thousands of systems or hundreds, you can spread that across a normal parallel supercomputer. Um, but that's not what Anton 2 is designed to do. It's designed to reach uh, the, the timescales with individual trajectories, um, getting at uh, phenomena that it would be difficult to simulate with shorter timescale trajectories. Um, and 
the, the limitations we'll go through a little bit. Um, you know, the, it's uh, Anton II is a race car, and so it, it's not a sports utility vehicle <laughs> uh, to, to do everything uh, that uh, that you could do on any other with uh, you know, just a general purpose MD simulation package on general purpose hardware. Um, but it still supports very diverse um, biomolecular research, um, and we'll go through the, the details of that. So, um, as I've been emphasizing, we'll continue to emphasize that those that will benefit and, and the purpose of Anton II is to help researchers who need long time scale approaching millisecond MD simulations of biological systems. To get access, um, as we mentioned, you need to be, have a, a PI, a principal investigator at a US institution, non-commercial, um, you know, for, for open research submit a, a competitive proposal uh, responding to this RFP that the link is right there. Um, and then kind of important here um, to submit that you will need to create an, a PSC account. And so you'll want to go into the system and, and, and um, create an account a couple of days before you have to submit. So um, if you are you know, one of those last minute warriors, um, you know, take note and go ahead and get that set up now. Um, so you're not scrambling at the end when it's when the deadline's near. Um, all the allocations are for one year, um, once you get an allocation. Um, we, we do leave access for a couple of years, so we, um, be, we are for one year beyond the end date of your, your allocation so that you can get your files and have access and do what you need to do, but the, you have to use your, your allocation within a year um, of, of receiving it. So um, just a few tips up front, and then we'll go into a lot of detail. Um, if, you know, the, and some of these are obvious, but um, you know, when you have your press for time, it's helpful to know, you know what to emphasize. We really do want emphasis on um, you know, be convincing us and the review panel. Uh, it's independently reviewed, not by PSC, but by a, 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 a panel of peers that is convened by the National Academy of Sciences, and I'll mention that. So you want to convince the reviewers that um, what you're proposing is feasible and that it will um, enable breakthrough scientific results that cannot be achieved on standard supercomputing systems. Like I mentioned, highly parallel systems, uh, you know, that are, that are best for, um, you know, generating moderate trajectory lengths um, or, or, you know, very large scale ensemble calculations. Um, You'll want to make sure that uh, your system that you're, you're gonna be studying will lines up with all the technical requirements to run on Anton II, and we'll go through that. And, um, and then you know, look, just read the RFP carefully and, and provide everything we ask you to provide. Um, it makes, makes it much easier to evaluate and, and helps you avoid uh, you know, common issues that, that reviewers will have as they, as they go through proposals. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us um, at these, uh, email addresses that you see there. Um, and if it's a technical question, um, I would just say Anton-support is the best place to go. Um, if it's you know, a question about sort of the mechanics of submitting the proposal, then grants at psc.edu is, is probably a good uh, first bet. All right. So, um, um, you know, sort of re reiterating a few things. Um, we're, we're primarily dealing here again with um, classical MD simulation of biomolecular systems, uh, periodic boundary conditions, explicit solvent. And um, you want to focus on questions that will be, that Anton II is ideally suited to, to answer. And I've mentioned that, that you know, the long time scale trajectories um, doesn't have to be, you can be, a, you know, you can have a series of trajectories, but, uh, but uh, you know, if you have, you know, a lot of very, very short uh, simulations that you're proposing, that's not going to go over so well. Uh, and then, so you, and you want to really justify this in your, in your proposal, make it really explicit. Why do you need longer tra trajectories that, um, that aren't feasible on conven conventional systems? And, uh, and, and this would generally be things that are in the, going to be at least in the microsecond range in tens of microseconds, you know, up to hundreds of microseconds um, approaching that millisecond timescale. So uh, you know, a few things um, that are really important as you, as you write the proposal, I mentioned again, I'm, I'm repeating a few of these important things throughout the, the talk. Uh, the, the principal investigator needs to be a, a faculty or staff member at a US academic or nonprofit research institution. 
So you can have international collaborators um, as, as co-PIs on these awards, but the PI must be at a US institution. A, um, a graduate student or postdoc may not be a PI, uh, but um, uh, you can have an advisor or, or other principal investigator apply and the, and the grad student or postdoc could, could be a co-PI um, on that proposal. Um, this is really a critical point here, this next part. Each investigator can serve as a PI for only one application. Now, what we often see a, we often see a, a PI appear on two proposals. One is the PI, and one is a co-PI in another proposal with, with another person as PI. And sometimes both of those people are on both of those two proposals. And so this can be okay, but I would recommend that you avoid this situation if you can, because it, it brings up questions with the review committee of our, is this just a sort of a, a scheme to get around the limit of one PI, one application? And so there's a kind of a high bar to convince the review committee that that's not what you're doing uh, with, with having you know, a PI as a co-PI on a different proposal and vice versa. So what you need to do to, to make that clear is that you must really demonstrate and explain in the text that these are totally distinct and independent research efforts so that they, it doesn't constitute effective doubling of the allowed allocation. But not only that, you need to demonstrate that the PI of the proposal is really the PI. In other words, that the work on Anton will actually happen primarily in the lab of the PI and will be directly supervised by the PI. So, so it's not a situation where um, the, the, the PI is sort of a figurehead and all the work's happening in the, in the co-PI's lab. So, so I wanna make that point really clear and drive that home. Um, so the, the best situation there really is if you, if you have a really clear cut case, you're like, this is obvious, we can justify this. Okay, that's so good, but otherwise, Avoiding that situation is probably your best bet. Um, we do invite new, new researchers to come and, and apply. In fact, we, we aim for 25% of the total allocated time to be granted to PIs who have not had a previous allocation on Anton. We, we really, since it's a unique resource, we really want to spread this value up as broadly as we can uh, among the community. And so we welcome researchers who have no previous experience running on Anton. To, to apply um, and, um, and just, you know, clearly you wanna do your homework there and, and, and provide justification and um, explain clearly, you know, how you will get to running these simulations effectively. You wanna show that you can, uh, that, it, that it's feasible and, and, and provide as much context there as you can for your qualifications for, for running this on Anton too. Um, but, but we definitely encourage those, those applications from, from new investigators. Okay, so going into a little bit of detail now on the um, details of this, the chemical systems and the force fields. This is all in the RFP. Uh, so I'm not gonna read through all of these, these details, but just at a high level, we talked about periodic boundaries and explicit solvent. Um, so, so, you know, no coarse grained force fields and uh, implicit solvent kind of situations. Uh, we're talking all atom simulations. Um, we, we, we do need um, orthorhombic systems. Um, so, so no weird system periodic boundary conditions. Um, and generally you want to have you know, systems that are not you know, super long and stretched out in one dimension that's you know, much, much, much longer than the other. But you can talk to us about that um, and, and double check. So you can, it can be you know, somewhat uh, stretched out um, and you'll just wanna to talk to us if it's not Kind of more, you know, uh, equal on on all sides. Um, between twenty five thousand and seven hundred thousand atoms, seven hundred thousand atoms can be a stretch. So let me let me just give you a warning here. These are rules of thumb, and there's no guarantee that if your system is under seven hundred thousand atoms, that it's going to run well on Anton two, um, because it depends on what kind of things you have in there. Um, you know, sometimes you know, if you have lots of lipids, there's, there's more interactions, there's more terms. And what we're really talking about here is a, a, a limitation on memory, on the fast memory that, that Anton II utilizes. Um, and so these are kind of rules of thumb for, you know, how much, what you can fit in that fast memory. And um, so, 
700,000 atoms is, a, is kind of a rule of thumb, uh, but that's really, a, that's really a max, max, max. Don't, you know, definitely do not go over that and, and maybe you know, be a little bit less than that if you can, uh, just to be sure, especially if you have something other than just a protein solvated in, in water. Um, you know, if it's you know, lipid bilayers and things like that, it's, it can be possible, but again, you, you can you know, cause more problems for yourself if you're really pushing that boundary. So really between 50,000 and 600,000 atoms is it maybe more recommended, um, but you can push that if you really need to. Maybe just talk to us if you're, if you're gonna push that boundary. Um, and then you want you know, sort of standard biomolecular systems. Um, and uh, we've got a list of the, the force fields here that, that, uh, that are supported. Um, you'll, you'll be converting your system from whatever you're running in, whatever you know, force fields you're using, um, Amber, Charm, or, or Gromax, you'll be converting those files into um, you know, a force field format and, and system input files that, um, that are made for Anton 2. So just be aware you'll be making that conversion. Um, if you can actually you know, try to convert your system and run it in the Desmond uh, um, uh, simulation software um, that's uh, also been developed you know, previously by D. Shaw Research, if you can run it in Desmond on a conventional uh, supercomputer, that will ease your transition. But we do have tools to help you to convert from the other standard formats um, if, if that's not feasible for you. So just a little heads up there um, on that. So, um, so, so check that list. Ask us if you have questions about what's acceptable. There, there are enhanced sampling capabilities on, on Anton. I'm not going to go through all these here right after this webinar. Um, and then, uh, starting, you know, promptly at uh, 2 p.m. Or let's see, what? Yes, this is what I'm. I'm in Mountain Time Zone actually, so uh, I have to work on the time zones. So, uh, so starting at 2 p.m., we'll have a, a, a webinar specifically on the enhanced sampling methods available on Anton. So I'm not going to go into that in detail here. We have a list on this slide. There's a list on the RFP. Um, if you have questions, you know, feel free to ask us about those. Um, attend the webinar in the next hour. And so this is just a summary of, of some of the, the situations where you'll, you, you'll want to write to us and check uh, before you submit your proposal to ensure that what you're proposing is going to be feasible. So um, if you have you know, custom parameters or molecules that aren't included in the standard distribution of the supported force fields that were listed on the previous um, one of the previous slides. Um, if you have a system where you have like dozens, you need dozens of restraints um, or restraints that or many restraints involving many atoms um, in, in a single restraint, like thousands of atoms, uh, talk to us. Um, as I, I mentioned, the elongated systems. Um, if you have a dimension that is much longer than, than the others, um, contact us. We can probably tell you if, if that's going to be okay. And, um, and generally with these, I would say with these technical questions, just go straight to Anton support for, for those questions. And, uh, and we'll, we'll get back to you on those. All right, so in your proposal, you're going to need to uh, justify the amount of time that you're requesting on Anton 2. So you'll You'll be looking at uh, you know, the, the size of the system that you're proposing. And then you'll look at this table that's in the RFP uh, with benchmarks for various size systems. And so your system won't probably align with the exact number of atoms in these systems, and that's fine. Um, you'll, you'll just want to esti estimate based on the system here that's closest to the size of your system how much time your system is going to take. And again, this won't be exact because it varies based on not just the size of the system, but also what the system is comprised of. Um, if it has lots of lipids or it's just a protein um, and, and, and other factors. So, so again, don't expect these to be exact. And you might you know, want to be just a little bit conservative in your expectations, ask for maybe a little bit more time than, than you think you, you, you strictly need. Not, you know, you have to justify it, obviously, but you know, so not too much, but um, but you'll use these numbers and you will um, then sort of lay out, I need to do this many simulations with, um, with this size of system. And each of those should take, based on these benchmarks, uh, this amount of time and lay that all out really explicitly in your application so that it's really easy to see how you justified it. Now, you'll also have to justify 
you know, why do you need to simulate that long for the system? What's the phenomena you're, you're looking at? Why do you expect to be able to see it on that time scale? You know, or, or why do you need that long of a time scale to, to see it? Um, both are important like, that, that you actually can see it in that time scale and, and that, that you know, so both necessary and, and sufficient um, is, is what we're looking for there as much as possible. And, and you know, the committee will understand that you know, these things, it's research. So, um, but the more you can do to justify that based on other knowledge of you know, how long a certain phenomenon is going to take um, and, and then really rigorously justifying because I, you know, this is the time scale we're looking at. I know I'm going to need simulations you know, at least this long and, uh, and then calculating that out. We have in this um, table, we have the performance in microseconds per machine day. So if you run for one day, and, and Anton 2, by the way, only runs one simulation at a time. So you're, when you're running on Anton 2, you're running you're on the whole system. And so, so when you run your simulation, uh, you know, who, whatever simulation is running has the full system's attention. So, so when you're running um, you know, for a day on Anton 2, if you have a 50,000 atom system, you're going to be getting about 53 microseconds per day. Um, so, so you're going to use that number to, to calculate um, the, the total amount of your request. Now, we have this funny thing called an MD simulation unit. That, that's what we're going to ask you to put your, your request into that format. So, we're, so we don't want you to, you, 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 you can't um, ask for your, 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 don't make your request in machine days. You're going to need to convert this number um, into MD simulation units. And there's an example in the RFP, uh, but and there's there's an example here in the slides that I'm not going to go through in, in in excruciating detail, but it's there for your reference to kind of show you how you how you make that calculation. This 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 the reason we do this is because um, Anton systems are going to their performance will keep getting better um, as things are optimized as new Anton systems come out. And this gives us a unit of measurement that's consistent, you know, across, no matter what the speed of, of the, the Anton system is. Um, and it's, it's based on one nanosecond of simulation time for a particular 50,000 atom system using you know, certain parameters. So this just standardizes this, and that's why we ask you to do it. And so, but you'll be able to, in the RFP, it will tell you, and I'll go into the next slide here. Yeah. So it'll tell you. So in this example, you know, 116,000 atom systems, about 21.5 machine days. And then we tell you how many MD simulation units there are in a machine day, uh, which is about 50,000 of those. So then you can use that number to make this conversion from machine days to the MD simulation units that you'll request. Uh, the maximum request is 460,000 MD simulation units. And uh, again, just to emphasize, just show these calculations explicitly in your proposal of how you Go from you know your your how you estimate the time that you're going to need and and uh, use that estimate to uh, to um, to make your request in uh, MD simulation units and I would recommend making you know showing you know the number of MD simulation units for each sort of piece of work in the proposal and maybe you know proposals usually have you know a couple of different aims right that they're going for and um, and so you know show break it down and show you know for each aim, you know, how much time are you requesting? Because sometimes the reviewers will love one of your aims and they'll hate <laughs> one, of, one of the other ones. And that makes it really easy for them to say, okay, you know, we're, you know, we're, we, they can break it down in at least in a logical way so that you can, you know, hopefully, you know, still, you know, do significant amount of the research you wanted to do, even if they don't award the full uh, proposal. Okay. Um, we're, we're targeting generally now, this is not a hard and fast thing. 460,000 units is a hard and fast rule. We're not going to award over that. Some people still request more than that. You won't get it. So, <laughs> so target, um, you know, your, your, your proposed research to that max limit, but many people also don't need that much for what they're, they're planning. And so we generally follow along these lines where we have 10 to 20, usually we have about 50 awards uh, per, per year. And about 10 to 20 of those are, are at or near the maximum. And about 30 to 40 of those are uh, at or near half of that maximum level. And so it, you know, it's not an absolute requirement, but if you can kind of you know, choose you know, which way you're gonna go, sort of a half allocation or full in your proposal, and then it, it, we, do, we recommend that you, you try to target one of those. But again, it's, it's, not, it's not a hard and fast rule other than the upper limit is 460,000. 
Now, so now I'm just gonna go through a few of, of um, the, this, again, the sections that are required. Um, for anyone, the, the proposal can be very brief, uh, but, uh, but we're looking at no more than six pages. Um, there's, but, there's a, but for those who have had a previous allocation, there is a separate, not included in the six pages, a separate progress report required, uh, two pages max, that you must submit. So if you, if you have had a previous allocation on Anton uh, as a PI, then you must submit a progress report or else um, your, your, your proposal is not gonna be considered. So, uh, so a two page progress report for those who have already had a, an award as a PI on the system. Um, you can submit, submit supporting documents like um, published papers in PDF format with the understanding that the reviewers are under no obligation to actually look at any supporting documents. Um, you know, so make sure that your proposal is self-contained and you make the case um, completely in the proposal, um, but you're welcome to provide those and reviewers may look at those if they, if they have additional questions. So I just, I just emphasize this point, make sure it's a self-contained proposal. They, they don't have to look at anything outside of the, the, the six page proposal or the two, and the two page progress report. Um, and so you know, the grants, grantsmanship here is really important to make sure that you know, everything that the RFP asks for is in there and contained in that six page uh, proposal and if required two page uh, progress report. So these are the sections. You're gonna have a summary uh, with, with descriptive title, um, the contact info for in investigator and co-PIs. Um, and then you know some background information, make sure that you know you can succinctly get the reviewers up to speed on, on the background you know, for what you're gonna propose. So they can they can judge the, the scientific merit. And then you'll talk about in two pages the scientific objectives. Again, here is these key points of why do you need Anton for this? You know, why, why couldn't you use you know, some other you know, system? And, and how will this enable breakthrough science? Um, feasibility is important because Anton is a special purpose system. Like I said, it's a it's a it's a race car, um, it's not an SUV. And so we really need you to pay attention to the technical uh, details and, and make sure that you're explicitly, this makes it so much easier if you explicitly you know, address each point as it's, as it's called out in the RFP. So um, explicitly addressing you know, the, uh, the, uh, the ensemble, the, you know, the, the, the cell, um, the periodic boundaries, uh, that you're using supported force fields, that you're within the, the, the range of, of atoms. Um, now this one's a little bit more subtle. Um, and so I'm gonna explain this one. So it says here, don't propose simulations that would finish in less than an hour on Anton. So you're gonna be doing your calculations. You'll know how long it will take to run a, a single trajectory um, on, on Anton for what you're proposing. If you're proposing trajectories that are gonna complete in less than an hour on Anton, then you're, 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 it's some combination of the trajectory is too short, and so you shouldn't be running it on Anton. Um, or you know the system is very small, even though it's a kind of long simulation. It's a very it's a very small simulation, and it's only running for a few microseconds. <laughs> um, so you want to make that calculation. There's a practical reason for this, though, other than it probably not being a very good use of Anton. Um, there's another practical reason, and that is is that when you're um, system starts to run on Anton, there's some a setup time. And as it's setting up the system, that, that takes resources, right? So if someone else is not able to run and it's, and it's going to count against your allocation. It's going to charge your allocation that you've, you know, you've written this great proposal, you've worked really hard, you've got great reviews. Well, if, if the reviewers are paying attention at this point, you wouldn't have gotten a great reviews. <laughs> but, um, but, but if you did get on and you're running these very short simulations, then it's gonna take a few minutes to set up your, um, your simulation. And so a significant chunk of your entire allocation will go to a setup phase that will not actually advance your simulations. And so then you could effectively be wasting, you know, 10% of your entire allocation or 20%, depending on how bad it is. And so, so we've, we've set this requirement so that, um, so that, you know, A, you're, you're, you're not gonna propose something that, that is gonna you know, be reviewed badly just on the basis of, it's not a long trajectory, not sufficiently 
compelling for Anton too, but also practically so that you're not just wasting a lot of allocation with very short, uh, you know, a series of very short simulations on Anton that, that aren't making, that are a lot of the times going to just the setup. So that, that part in the RFP is, you know, given very brief and I just give a very long explanation. So, so hopefully that will help you avoid that, that scenario. All right. Uh, so you, the reviewers want to see that, that you're going to be ready to go uh, with, these, with these systems as much as possible. That, that'll be to your benefit. The more that you can show that you know, you've already built and equilibrated the system, for example. So it's going to be, you know, or, or, or that you can you know, say convincingly that you know, by, the, by, the, by the time this, it'll be time to run an Anton that you'll have that. If you, if you already have it up and running in some form and you can say that in your proposal, that's great. You know, reviewers love to see that. Um, and, and then you'll, you'll want to talk about your ex expertise and experience, uh, running, um, running MD simulation. It's, you don't have to have experience running on Anton, but it is important that you have experience running conventional simulations because it's not going to be easier to be successful on, you know, with the race car than it is with the, the SUV. <laughs> now the race car is harder to drive. Uh, it, it, it just is, uh, but we, we do a lot of work and we have done a lot of work to make it as easy as possible. Um, but, but you'll want to you know, bring experienced people to be able to convert the system successfully. I mean, you, know, you don't want to mess up your force field, right? As you're, as you're converting, uh, that, that's bad. Um, you know, who, who have familiarity with the force fields and, and, and the, the system formats and, and, and can have run you know, these other standard packages um, extensively. Um, you know, this is the kind of experience that the reviewers will be looking for. And then gonna hit this point again here, at least one more time, probably another one. Uh, if there's a co-PI on the proposal um, and that co-PI is, is PI on another proposal, you know, make sure that you demonstrate that the work described in the proposal will be conducted primarily in the PI's lab, directly supervised by the PI, and it's you know, a distinct research effort. Um, and then, and then there's this, the, the, the last section here is the, the place to, to really clearly outline the justification based on, on what, what we talked about. So strong scientific arguments for both the length and number of the proposed simulations. Why, why do you need trajectories that long? I talked about that before. Why do you need, you know, is, why do you need to run 10 of these? Um, you know, would, would, would five not do uh, or, or three? So again, the, with understanding that you know it's really hard to know you know beforehand you know sometimes how exactly you many you will need but but you want to just you want to try you want to try to justify as based on whatever previous information or or experiments you've done anything like that will help convince reviewers that that this is really feasible to do um, what you're what you're saying that you can do with with this the, these type and length and number of simulations. All right, so the progress report. Um, I mentioned it's required if you had a previous allocation as a PI. Um, and then you just, you wanna describe your results. And, and of course, reviewers love to see productivity. So uh, publications that you can point to that have come out of previous, your previous allocation, either you know, in the works or you know, submitted or you know, whatever you can show there. Um, if not, then you'll wanna describe in detail you know the the results that came out of it and the and the prospects you know for 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 getting that published um, presentations you know anything there that you can do to show productivity and progress using previous allocations um, and again just make sure it's all in the text of the progress report um, you can attach those papers but viewers may or may not look at look at them um, you know if if there was some digression. Um, from what in, a pre, in the previous year, from what you proposed, you, you probably you want to talk about that. Reviewers might go and look at that. Um, most are, you know, most are too busy to go look at that or, or, or <laughs> to, to try to match up what you proposed previously with what you did. But if it was significantly diverged, then you know it behooves you to, to have an explanation. And um, and then real and th but this one is this last point is really important. Reviewers do look at this, and, and we look at this. Is you know if you used none of your previous allocation, that's that's gonna be hard you know for them to say. So you'll you'll want to if there's some really great reason like, you know my lab shut down because of COVID, <laughs> uh, then then of course that will be understood. But you just want to justify that if if you use little or 
or you know, a significant portion of your allocation was left unused. Now, there's a, there's a little bit of a gotcha here for, for PIs who had an allocation in the previous round because you're applying now and, you're, and your allocation isn't done. And so you could have, again, a significant chunk of time that you still have to burn in between now and the end of November. Um, that, but you know, the reviewers are going to look at that when they look. They'll be reviewing this uh, end of July, August time period. So it'll be closer to the end of that, but still there'll be a chunk of time that you'll have to use up that allocation. And you're going to be submitting in, you know, of course in July, and you know, so you'll be at a certain point. So it just it behooves you, even though you'll have some time to to, to continue to run, if you haven't used a lot of your allocation yet this year, as at the time of your submission. Have a little bit of explanation in there and a little bit of a plan in your progress report for um, you know, how you're going to, to make sure that you use up your allocation effectively in the, in the remaining time by, by the end of November. Um, so, so that's, you know, it's, it's, more, it's more critical if you've had ones in, in previous years where the allocation's you know, all done and you just, you just didn't use it. It's there sort of in black and white, but reviewers do kind of question if, too, if you have, there's a big chunk of your allocation still to be used um, late, late in the in the allocation period. Okay, so I'm flying through, and I see chat questions coming in, so that's good. We'll we'll have time to get to those. So now I'm just going to summarize some common proposed pitfalls. Pitfalls. This is a, a great little slide, you know, to to look at as you're writing your um, as your your proposal. Poor grantsmanship is probably the number one issue that kills. Uh, proposals. So you want to make sure you have clear hypotheses. Um, I hear the term fishing expedition come up a lot in the review panels. <laughs> you don't want that associated with your proposal. It, um, that, that, that can kill it as much as possible. Again, um, you know, it, it's research. There's, there's always some fishing, but you really want to try to move you know, away from that as much as possible with these. As, as they're allocating limited resource, they're going to go to the proposals. They feel like this is really clear that this can make you know, a significant impact. Um, and then you also want to have, um, you know, in the grantsmanship category, just, you know, really, again, emphasize why is this an important system and, and, and you know, what contributions will the results, if you were successful and you do this, what, how will that affect the field? And again, you know, ideally, we're looking for something that will have a, you know, a bit of a disruptive effect, you know, some breakthrough science um, in the field. Um, so then other things outside of the grantsmanship category, um, just again, that one where you have the PI, co-PI pair that are on each other's proposals, um, there's, people generally do not explain this very well. Even though it's in the RFP, um, they tend to gloss over this. Do not gloss over it. it that can sink your proposal. Um, the, um, and, and if you don't have to do it, just don't do it. Um, the, uh, insufficient justification for the requested amount of simulation units, um, insufficient justification for you know, why you really need Anton as opposed to you know, other systems that are available through other things like Exceed or, or the DOE um, or local campus computing systems. Um, and then, you know, you know, poor progress or, you know, in, in, insufficient justification of why you didn't use previous allocations. Th those kind of things can, can, can sink your proposal quickly. So there, there's other things, but, but I think these are the things we see most often. So when it's time to submit, um, you know, we go through the portal as described. Um, PSC is gonna review it for feasibility and any missing documents and that sort of thing. And then it will be sent to a review panel convened by the National Academy of Sciences. Uh, they conduct a rigorous and transparent process, uh, review process. The review committee is made public um, and there's actually a comment period open to the community. Anyone can comment on the review panel, express concerns um, prior to the review happening. Um, and then you know, the, the, the reviewers of the proposals have to come to agreement on, on a recommendation to the, the entire committee. And then the entire committee has to approve that, that recommendation for each proposal. And, and, and this gets written up into a report that's published on the um, National Academy of Sciences website. Um, so you'll get notified of acceptance and, and information about login information and how to get started um, if your proposal is accepted. Expect that notice um, to come by mid-November. People start to get antsy, <laughs> uh, but but you know it's 
you know, we get it out as soon as we can, but it can be up to like mid-November. Um, the, I mentioned the NAS report is published on their website of the whole review, um, but you'll get an individual notification um, of, of award or, or not, uh, as the case may be. The allocation I mentioned is one year. You get an extra year after that just for your files, but you don't get to use your allocation over the course of two years. You need to use it in the within the one year time period, um, except under some extenuating circumstances sometimes, but, but really you wanna to try to use it in that, that one year time period. Um, there's a workshop start in early December for all those whose proposal are accepted. And, um, and so we invite all those with accepted proposals for that year to come and, and have a one day training workshop that's intensive. We basically try to get, if you have your system ready to go, that's ideal because then we can take, you can take your system, prepare it for Anton and start running that same day during that workshop. We really recommend that for those who are awarded. Um, and then um, we just ask you that as you do get um, into your work, that you let us, let us know when you have publications and that in your publications, you acknowledge uh, you know, the NIH grant that supports Anton and there's information on the website about that. Um, and, and, and acknowledge Anton in your work uh, so that we can keep getting funding to uh, provide this resource. We have to justify it to, to our uh, NIH uh, program. So, um, and then, you know, send us the publications and the theses. We, we, we collect these, we, we curate them, um, and uh, we, we show this great work that you're doing to, to the NIH. We also ask you to keep your trajectories. It's just a reminder, not so much about the proposals, but uh, just, a, just a heads up, keep your trajectories that you generate on Anton and all their associated data um, on the system. Don't delete it. We're gonna keep that private um, until publication or up to one year after the end of your allocation, whichever comes first, but then we share it um, according to you know, NIH um, guidelines for data sharing um, and can make it available for others to benefit from that as well. Um, so that is pretty much it. And I'm gonna stop now and let's see if we can address questions that have risen in the time that uh, remains. Great, thanks Phil, thank you so much. Uh, some questions that had come up in the chat, I'm just gonna um, <clears throat> review them and just provide if they, if they were answered already or if they weren't. Um, the first question was from Aaron, it was, is there a way to estimate the setup time? Does it scale with the system size? Uh, this was not answered answered yet. So, so the setup time when you start running on Anton? Um, yeah, it, it does scale with the size. Um, so yeah, so very large systems uh, will, will take longer to set up uh, before you actually get to simulating. So that will take a little bit more of your allocation time. But if you're if you're um, abiding by the guideline that I set at there at the beginning that, you know, you're, you're um, um, your, your entire trajectory is not you know, going to finish in, in less than an hour, then, then you're fine. Because actually we run all the systems an hour at a time um, because it's a shared system. So you, you're going to put it in the queue and then it will run for an hour and then it will step out you're, and, and someone else's trajectory will, will run. And then when you get back to the top of the queue, then yours will run again for an hour. And, that, and it, the system manages all of that. But as long as your, your, each trajectory takes longer than an hour, you're, you're doing fine. Thanks, Phil. And then uh, also, uh, Gabrielle had uh, can also can you also have simulations with NPT? And uh, Marcella and Rosita addressed it. Uh, yes, constant NVT and constant N NPT or constant NVE. Uh, and then the next one was uh, Evgeny. He he had a question about the limitation on a number of simulations requested if they are not too short and they sum up the accepted MD simulations units. Like for example, two hundred thirty thousand. Is it okay to request twenty simulations? Uh, there was some discussion in there um, about uh, making sure that you know, touching on the point that you made about running for a short amount of time, less than an hour. Right. Yeah. And I think twenty. You know, depending on your, um, you know, your system size, and um, you know, if, if you're using your whole allocation there, you'll, you'll want to do the calculation. But that, that doesn't sound to me like you're going to be hitting against that minimum. Um, now again, you'll you'll want to justify like like I said the number of simulations versus simulation length, um, and uh, so that, that doesn't sound you know outrageous in terms of of, of uh, you know number of simulations, um, but you'll just want to make sure that you can justify that it's um, 
you know, it, it is, you know, focused, you know, more on you know, sort of these long, longer simulations that are really unreachable on, on conventional hardware. So you, you might want to kind of estimate how long would it take you to run, you know, one of those uh, 20 trajectories on, on a conventional system. Um, and, uh, and, and then you can sort of make that very clear, you know, it's still going to, you know, still take a really, really, really long time that would make it impractical, you know, to pursue, you know, this research or, you know, arguments like that. Um, as well as, you know, the scientific arguments. Great, thank you. Uh, and then it looks like the last question was from Eugene. Where are the trajectory, where are the trajectories shared after the first year? So right now we keep them available on the system. Um, and, and if someone requests access to that, so they see your paper, for example, and and they 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 want access then 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 we'll give it ac give them access if it's been longer than a year or um, uh, or or if or if or if you've already you know had a publication we will talk to the groups so we we talk to the groups and uh, we reach out to them and say hey you know, you know we need we want to share your trajectory um, so so they're all on the system now we've also had sort of a minimal effort I would say. Well, it's been a lot of effort, but it's it's not compre a comprehensive effort because it actually takes you know a bit of work to actually put these in a place that they're really accessible. We have a web page that has a handful of these trajectories from over the years um, that are actually you know they're on a web page with descriptions and and links to to the trajectories. This we do in collaboration with the with the groups. We are looking to this is something we kind of did as a best effort for the for the past award in this new award with Anton. That we just received. We, so I, I guess the point is we weren't funded to actually do that activity to really put in a lot of work to make them available in a nice way to the community. Um, but we do preserve them so that we can make, you know, let people can download them on request from, from an, the Anton system itself. Um, in this new, this new uh, period of um, this new award that we've just received from NIH, we are looking to do more to make them available on a web page um, and make them more accessible. And so that's that's what we would plan to do. So we could share with you if you're interested a link of where the current ones are. Um, I think we can do that. Um, and uh, and so you can see that um, this is something that we we think we'll be able to improve and, and be more comprehensive with um, going forward. Yeah. Thanks. I also would like to to say that uh, more and more as the uh, journals, when you send your paper for publication, will request where is it going to be made public. So uh, it helps in that way also. And we correspond with the PI to make sure that we get the authorization before we make them public. Right. Yep, we, we always check with the PI and the, the group first before we, we make something public, but that are those are the guidelines and what we, we expect people to do. And really they're just aligned with, with NIH data sharing. And it's, it's I mean, it really is, um, it really is the responsibility of the PI with, with the NIH award to, to make sure that those data are shared in, in, uh, in accordance with the, the NIH data sharing policies. And those are gonna be coming even more, um, uh, I, th there's gonna be a strong, even stronger emphasis on that at NIH Coming soon, I can't remember if it's 2023. Their their you know new guidelines are going into effect. I think um, so. Um, so anyway, it's it, it's actually something we you know we we help with um, as, as you can have a place where they can be hosted and uh, and be made available. But but ultimately, it is the research group's responsibility to make sure that they're shared in accordance with the, the agency policies. Okay, did we address all the questions? Yes. Yep, that's it. All right. Yeah, I don't know whether there are any questions uh, besides the chat that people want to ask. Yeah, we've got a couple of minutes, and and then you know we're we're probably going to not go right up to the to the one to the hour. We might want to end just a couple of minutes before, um, so that folks who make the switch over to the um, enhanced sampling webinar that's coming up right after this. Uh, but we do have a few more minutes for questions if anyone wants to ask another question. Yeah. So Kevin, uh, he, he put the survey on the chat for, and we ask that uh, everybody please fill, fill it up so we know for the future what we need to uh, improve or change. And I also put uh, 
further uh, back on the chat is the URL of the Anton page where the lecture will be uh, and where the RFP is. So maybe I'll put it again. Yeah, thank, thanks, Marcella, for that. All right, any last questions? All right. Great. If not, then thanks for joining us. Um, we're uh, excited to see your, your proposals. Uh, feel free to reach out to us you know, via those email addresses if you, if you have any questions that, uh, that either you, you didn't think of during this, this, uh, this webinar or, or were too shy to ask. Um, and uh, we will hope to, to see you again soon and, um, and see you on Anton. Yeah, best of luck. And there is a seminar coming up uh, about enhanced samples, sampling. Yep. And that is a separate web, that's a separate Zoom link. So, so, um, so it, it won't be on this Zoom, we'll, we'll sign off of here. And uh, if you're joining the other one, make sure you find the link for, for that one and, and join that one um, as a separate Zoom session. Thanks all. Thank you.